Morning all. I've got quite a backlog of over-the-board games recently, which I'd like to go through, uh, time permitting. And it's, uh, Let's have a look at the game just recently on Thursday. It was in the Middlesex League Division 2, at home at Muswell Hill. Uh, we were playing Metropolitan Chess Club, and I was placed on board one in this eight-board match, which I find quite an honour. I was playing against a 190 ECF player. I'm 195 at the moment. My opponent was Manuel uh, Pere Carballo, I mean a French player. Uh, I presume a French player. So he played e4, and I played the Sicilian defence. And he played a very unusual move here. On live book, this is like uh, about um, three, four, five, six, seven, about the fifteenth choice a3 but it's a surprise weapon and I thought well there's a logical thing I can do which is g6 and actually this is the top response in my book to try and exploit the diagonal if white's really going to play for b4 white did play for b4 bishop g7 and now I'm prompting knight c3 so the decision points here I actually played a very unusual move usually plasma black play d6 here and we're kind of out of most theory anyway, so I'm going to put on a bit, sir. I played actually knight uh, f6, and the engine doesn't actually mind this too much. It's only a small advantage with e5, kicking the knight, for example, which he didn't do. Say knight h5, uh, f4 is not covered, so g4 is knight f4, the knight can slip in there. Um, if B takes, well, actually the engine suggests here, better than bishop takes E5, there's a, there's a different move here, uh, because here um, knight F3 might be quite nice, a little bit okay for white, because this knight's kind of stranded, uh, looks a very strange position, but actually the engine is actually suggesting to play D6 here. That's very interesting. So C takes, E takes, F takes here. We're in very new territory, and it looks as though black's doing fine here, just with this pawn sack. Uh, it looks like there's lots and lots of pressure on D4, etc. Uh, so say we follow through with this, we can actually win D4 pawn. Uh, it doesn't really matter about that. This, this is uh, quite nice for black. Okay, uh, queen takes h5. There's actually queen c6 here as well. Apparently that's quite strong. So knight f6 seems to be a perfectly reasonable response with that idea. He's playing actually rook b1. And now already after rook b1, the engine suggests I'm actually doing fine in this position. I took on b4, a takes, and now I castled. And to my delight, my opponent played g3. So instead of controlling the d5 square with bishop c4, which is kind of what I expected, he lets me actually liberate my position in one go. Instead of just d6, d5 is possible here. Uh, if he had played bishop c4, yeah, I think that would have been... Um, we had a quick look at this after the game. And um, which we didn't consider knight takes e4. Black can actually play this for d5 and be okay. So I'm not entirely sure the opening has been a success for white with these variations, with black already getting an advantage. But especially after g3, d5 is quite a powerful move. And you know, I was on the white side against the GM recently in blitz playing g3, and d5 was very, very powerful and should have, I thought, wiped me out. So e takes, knight takes d5 is just such a lovely position, I thought, with the bishop. Uh, and the piece is all having a great time in this position, great control of d4. I'm not even a pawn down or anything. Uh, so knight takes d5, queen takes, and his idea was queen f3. And here, I thought, actually, there's quite a cheeky little idea I can use here to do with this rook, which is neglected over there, uh, which is try and win it. And uh, so queen a2, 
maybe even stronger with the same idea or, or nearly as strong well a little bit stronger apparently is bishop e6 so if takes takes this this is a bit of disaster losing the exchange this rook has no squares these lovely bishops are winning that rook so of the queen f3 i played queen a2 immediately which is still a strong move and already my advantage is apparently about one and a half pawns worth nearly 1.5 1 1.43 1 after queen a2 fantastic i mean i thought the position was fantastic and to be honest i thought i was winning the exchange i didn't see this then after queen b3 bishop e6 i thought it was going to be winning the exchange but white has c4 so the bishop stays there protecting c4 but still black is better here i take on b3 takes now i don't really want to play b5 well i thought this might be a bad idea because bishop g2 but even in this position apparently apparently this is okay for black as well that's how strong the position is say with knight a6 so taking here taking here this is just a strong position for black as well if d3 takes and uh, you know there's a pawn for the exchange another one and this is actually a massive advantage for black yeah this is just horrendous this position so even even b5 apparently is a strong move here i played knight c6 which is actually probably even stronger uh, so numerous ideas let's carry on with b5 or knight d4 he plays knight f3 and now my a pawn a5 i'm having visions here of of larson against spassky the classic um with with h5 h4 because i just thought on b5 haven't i got a4 and this pawn could be mega dangerous here um possibly best for white is taking this pawn and we were having a look at this after the game let's have a look taking knight takes rook b4 thing is this c pawn is a bit of a problem if d3 here well there's bishop c3 is potentially on the cards just to win the exchange that's that's easy um in fact uh, there's nothing um, the engine is also giving this for some reason first uh rook a1 check with the idea of taking hair taking hair and it's pretty gruesome yeah so that's even more accurate but just bishop c3 of course uh in that line after taking yeah here it means the c pawn how is the c pawn being protected so anyway my opponent played b5 and here is the visions of Lance and Spassky because this pawn I just push it forget about the knight and I thought I thought I could just push it again on rook b1 if if rook b1 I thought a3 is possible here because this bishop is actually landing the pawn it's queening the pawn quite quickly in fact the engine suggests a3 is is, is an advantage for black so if takes I mean that's a disaster with a2 and if bishop takes I had a quick look at this during the game takes this possibility takes I was looking at rook takes f3 I thought this is a bit double-edged though because of this bishop g2 and taking here and it actually is it is actually the engine doesn't really rate this uh, too much it's only just above a pawn now so white has some dynamic compensation here with this big pawn so that's one thing to avoid white's you know dynamic play um but um so but after rook b1 you know a3 is not forced i can just play other things i can play knight a5 here that's 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 simple and strong so bishop b2 i can just take here and that's great uh, so actually he played actually rook a3 and now I, I come up with an interesting move I thought um, well knight b4 looks obvious and it is probably a very strong move as well knight b4 how does he stop knight c2 I mean it's just it's just a ridiculous position to have with white this kind of position is just it's just very very strong um, you know, rook d8 here prompting 
that d3 I mean how how is d3 defended or you know, bishop c4 is now threatened and so anyway I played um, instead of knight b4 I actually played another move which is also strong as well knight a5 I'm offering the a4 pawn if he takes this then knight b3 and I'm embarrassing the bishop quite severely if taking you know the bishop is is actually stranded if king d1 rook a1 so I thought this is a great move knight a5 uh, so knight a5 and he plays d3 protecting c pawn I thought what a gorgeous position I haven't had such a gorgeous position with black um, since uh, maybe my game against Andrew Stone which was quite crushing from the opening but this is another really like I thought bone crushing position look at these bishops look at these rooks they're lovely and connected look at my opponent's pieces they're just in what you could call disarray and this you know lovely past a pawn all the positional trump cards are really exciting to have here with black my opponent played king d1 which doesn't really help matters after this enormous pin bishop g4 after bishop e2 I play rook fd8 and can you sp see what I'm actually threatening here if I gave you 10 seconds can you identify what black is threatening in this position so these pieces don't just look good they they are functional as well against white's king even in this position if I gave you 10 seconds here You might want to pause the video. Okay, so black is simply threatening taking here and then taking here, and I'm winning this. So he has to parry that. He played knight d2, and guess what I played in this position? Is it's um, there's actually two very very strong moves indeed. One is actually even simpler than what I played. So I'll give you maybe uh, 100 points for each if you can identify the top two moves which the engine validates as the top two moves. I played the second one. So 10 seconds starting from now, what would you play with black here in this absolutely gorgeous position to have? Okay, I play the more complicated rook takes d3, sacking the bishop temporarily. Uh, but apparently knight takes c1 is, is as good as well. If king takes, then bishop takes. If bishop takes here, the engine is suggesting bishop b2. So, you know, it's actually winning the exchange. The a2 square has been taken away. I didn't see this one. That's pretty simple. Um, so that's a very very simple one. So give yourself 100 points for knight takes and 100 points for rook takes d3 because this is this is also strong. The idea that after bishop takes g4, I have knight takes c1 protecting the rook, nabbing a pawn. And the important thing is not just the pawn; it's it's unblocking this a pawn. This a pawn lust to expand to queen. After rook takes d3, knight takes d3. I'm hitting f2 now. My opponent tries a positional sacrifice with bishop f3. I thought I'm already in a good position. I just need this a pawn to queen. I don't really need to win the material, and I don't really want these two connected past pawns coming at me. So I play the cautious move, which is the second strongest apparently, just knight c5. And he just actually he resigned here. This there's nothing holding back the a pawn. This bishop is just beautifully placed. The rook is beautifully placed for this a pawn. To queen, he resigns. I mean, if king c2, a3, we can just queen this this pawn. It's it's queening. Uh, it's a horrendous position for white to have. And knight takes f2. I mean, this was good as well. Even if I'm greedy, the bishop takes b7, which I thought was a bit of a concern. But it's actually no big deal. I mean, this is no big deal really. I mean, it was already a, a winning position here apparently in this position engine just has a field day with uh, 
actually just the idea was to snap off the rock. We didn't actually even see this in post mortem. But the king is just cut off here by the bishop. And the pawn just in time after a2. That pawn is queening. We were having a look at just inferior rook a7 or rook b8. And in fact, if this, well, this is still winning anyway. a3. Um, let's might as well just take this straight away. Let's just take this. Knight b3. And um, you know what is what is I actually doing without any b6? The pawns are actually not going anywhere. I'm just winning this this piece. So so that's not a big deal. And we also had to look at the ridiculous rook a7, which is helping White's concept quite considerably. But even this, you know, it's it's still pretty pretty hopeless. Even even this position here, just apparently rook a4 or rook a6. If here bishop e5 just stopping that and this pawn is ready to, to queen the, the bishop's doing a good blockade job so anyway the position was totally hopeless and this didn't even this didn't even do anything this bishop f3 but I, this is just very very simple as well I don't even need any more material I'm already winning and this is a clear win with knight c5 you know end point theory so a 23 move win um, but this this goes on the back of some some very interesting hard struggles uh, which I really want to show you. Uh, dying to show you these games I've been playing recently. But this was my last game in the Middlesex League, which I hope you uh, maybe got something from. It's it's just a very very unusual opening. I don't know. It's the second game in, in a row in this league where I've played players um, trying to avoid mainline Sicilian defence theory in very odd ways and just d actually getting disadvantaged from the opening. You know just the thing is with going on these rare sidelines is sometimes you know basic principles of development getting pieces out central control you know control of central squares just handing me loads of trump cards and it's like the whole you know concept of weakening the diagonal i'm just i'm just using that i'm just seeing it as a way of weakening the diagonal a4 and b4 rather than going into giving white a huge bishop on b2 no i'm i'm kind of just tapping into the weaknesses and the the rook is like a victim here of the queen a2. I thought this was quite amusing. Um, and I actually thought I was winning the exchange because I, I thought, you know, taking here. But, uh, but it, you know, it turns out that even after c4, I mean, it's just a wreck. It's almost like a wreck, white's position here. Here. Because you look at the actual development and, and the number of targets tactically. Uh, these three are still just there I mean it's it's quite I, I was really absolutely delighted that a player just five points away from me on the ECF gradient scale I can have this position with black um, I guess here if I didn't play um, well knight b4 even knight a5 these are both strong because you know anytime d3 is played then then there's huge pressure on the d file it, it's just such a huge position that there are different ways of actually um, uh, you know, increasing the advantage here. So anyway, I really enjoyed that one on Thursday, and um, yeah, I hope you got something from it. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.